Uh, thank you for being here. I know it's a long day, but it's really nice to be uh, again together. So thank you for being here. And hopefully we'll, you will learn something. And I already learned something by speaking with the, these two guys next to me, uh, getting ready for this panel. So we're going to dive right into it. Uh, Growing through M&A Stronger Together, that's the title. Uh, we have two different examples. We're going to dive uh, into it a little bit. I don't know if we take any questions uh, at the end. No, we don't. OK, so skip the question part. You can save them for after. Uh, right next to me, Eric Sell from Shadow. Uh, thank you for being here. And right next to you, Joseph Beauvais from Tiller System. My first question is uh, about the, the context in which your two companies were either acquired uh, for Tiller or uh, for, uh, for uh, Eric. Uh, it was not an acquisition. It was another thing. Maybe you can go a little, a little deeper on that. So uh, maybe, Joseph, you can start because it's more common uh, M&A operation. So could you explain us how it all started? And did you have in, an, in mind the fact that you wanted to sell? Yeah, uh, naturally, to be honest. Um, so we've launched our company in, uh, in 2015. So it's been like six years. Um, so Tiller is basically like a payment provider, point of sale provider for small merchants. And uh, let's say uh, 2020 was not uh, an easy year for us, for all small merchants in general. So we were not expecting at all uh, to have uh, discussions such as M&A or anything like that. And, uh, and so it was kind of a surprise when they reached out to us. Um, and then, you know, we had uh, some discussions and, and we realized that uh, we could also benefit from it. So, yeah, let's say it, it started from here, but uh, no expectation at the beginning, no. Eric, you have a different so, story. Um, so for Shadow, for those who don't know Shadow, Shadow is a solution which is based on cloud computing for gaming. So it avoids you to acquire a PC for gaming. You can rent on the cloud your own PC and put your games on the cloud and to have access from any device on the solutions, like if you had the PC at home. Um, what is interesting, it was not a merger and acquisition. What was interesting there is that Blade, because for those who know the company before was called Blade, was at a value chain completely vertical. So they were offering the solution of SaaS, but they were also used to acquire the equipments and to negotiate with the data centers and to drive the network. So even if it's not uh, a merger, it's an acquisition that has been done by Octave Claba. Octave is the chairman and the founder of OVH. Uh, quite well known in the data center. And the idea of uh, Octave was to say it's very important that we create a leader with OVH on the platform as a service. But at the same time, he was thinking about creating the same thing on software as a service. And for that, he wanted to acquire the best technology in the world. And I think Shadow is the best in the world for cl cl cloud computing. And, and to take benefits of the fact that he had the two um, pillars to um, create a dynamic. So today, Shadow is not taking any more care about the past. We have an agreement with OVH, who is acquiring for us all the hardware. So we're moving from a CapEx model, CapEx intensive model, to an OPEX model, which will simplify our life and we will be able to focus on the software as a service. So it's a different, uh, totally different business model, and I, I guess that he, that played a huge role when uh, Octave got into uh, Shadow. But also the context was was difficult for Shadow, so it's also a, another uh, element of the story that maybe you want to share with us. Yes. Yeah, so, so the point is to uh, number one to rebuild the profitability because the blade was in bad condition. Uh, so to rebuild this uh, profitability, the partnership with OVH will help us in terms of capex intensive uh, coverage. The second one is scalability, and and based on that, we are redesigning completely our IT organization in order to create new pillars in addition to the gaming, to be able to offer to the community 
innovations, whatever it is on video conferencing, on storage, on email, and so on, and to have at the end of the day a cloud computing solution with the top technology, and in the future that will go to sovereignty. And, and for that, if you go to a European sovereignty, it's very important and critical to have at least the past, the platform as a service, which is sovereign. Understand. We we'll go deeper on that in a second, but I wanted to ask Joseph about the, the really the acquisition process. Most of the time, was yeah, sometimes it fails. Let's let's speak real here. So, uh, sum up, bought up uh, Tilo system what a year ago? Six months ago. Six months ago. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was, I so the process started maybe a year ago. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, almost a year ago. Yeah. So, uh, what were the key elements to really made it so far a, a success? Even if it's maybe too early to call it a success, but were there key elements? Yeah, we're, yeah. we're still integrating the company. Um, however, it's, it seems like it's, uh, it's moving forward pretty well, so we're very happy. And um, I don't know, I would say that the main thing is to be able to retain the, the entrepreneurs, the, the founders, in case you want to retain them, obviously, uh, which come with, um, I guess, um, a lot of autonomy first. Uh, I mean, I've been a founder, I've been an entrepreneur. I, if I were to want that someone tell me everything that I need to do, then I would have not launched my business in the first place. So I think once they, once the acquirer understand that they need to give a certain level of autonomy to the founders. That's already the very first step, and uh, and uh, and then I guess that you need a quick integration because time is risk, and the longer the integration, the higher the risk of the integration. As well as you need to really create like uh, I don't like the word synergies, but more like you, you need to have cross-sell potential, right? It, the, the, the acquisition need to make sense from a business standpoint. And, uh, and it did with SumUp, actually. We're selling SumUp card readers to our merchants. SumUp is selling point of sales to their merchants. So it was, uh, it was pretty much obvious. You know? right. Those are the first baby steps for, for the integration. But in a COVID uh, environment, like you, made, like you did this acquisition, again, what, what were, the, were there other baby steps? Uh, to really make it work, w did you did you uh, merge all together in the same place? I mean, obviously not because of COVID, but so how did you how, how did you corp this uh, culture uh, to make it work? Yeah, I would say step by step. Like to be honest, so first it was at the end of the COVID, uh, the business was our business was growing fast. You know we. We've benefited from the COVID in terms of momentum, in terms of uh, value addition for those merchants. Um, so the business was doing well. And, uh, and yeah, step by step, I mean, very naturally, um, we've, we were very excited to, to do this merger on both sides. Uh, we were even that excited that we signed the merger. The merger was not completely, totally uh, done, you know, yet. Uh, but we've launched it, we've communicated the merger, we've launched the business and so on. So I would say step by step, there were like a strong willingness from both sides to work together. And, uh, and yeah, obviously we went to Berlin, so the headquarters is in Berlin. They came to Paris and yeah, it started this way. Did they, did they have a, a strong vision about where you should go together or it was more like a process? No, they had a vision, they had a strategy, even though I would challenge, right? Today I would challenge the strategy they had in the past, you know? But no, they had one. And, uh, and uh, as I said, it was like, it was an obvious merger, right? They are a payment provider, they needed a point of sale. So at some point it was like very obvious. But now I realize they were not completely ready, you know, in terms of integration, like understanding that, okay, Acquiring company is one thing, and then integrating another business line, in a, it's another thing. Because you need to integrate the people, you need to integrate all the, the CRM, the data, all of those you know, specifics. And, uh, and yeah, I, I guess for the next one, we'll be more ready, but uh, 
let's say it was uh, challenging at the beginning, but a strong willingness to, to work together. So, so yeah. And a question for you, Eric, because Octave is obviously someone very strong. I mean, we all know his personality and his path. So when you have a strong person like that with a, with a strong vision again, how, how do you work with him on a day-to-day -day basis? And even sometimes if you don't agree with what he says. So uh, I, I think I, I don't want to focus only on Octave, but he for sure is very present because what, what is important, and, and it's not a merger, but it's an acquisition, and it, it's important also when you have Octave coming in. Uh, number one, you touch the point, the vision, and it's coming with a clear vision where he wants to drive the company. So that's very important. The second one is values. And probably it's a way to answer to your questions. Octave has certain values, the trust, the respect, the courage, and, and that's something that we are sharing uh, with the team. And, and at the end of the day, the most important point for the success of the company will be people. And, uh, and it's just an example that I would like to share with you. When he came in, he accepted to be my CTO for a certain period of time. And he spent the time half an hour with every member of the team, okay, to discover them, understand what they are doing. And after we've done salary positioning review, and after he came back with half an hour with each of the team members to explain why they are there. How many people? Uh, you've done it on 65 people, okay? So, and when you are Octave uh, introducing uh, your company in the stock exchange, you know, this is, I think, the values that we want to share. We have ambitions, and, and I hope that in the future, because we'll build those vert verticals where we will deal on open source partnerships, and why not acquisition, those values will be in the heart of our approach, and that's very important. And Joseph, that's the first time you uh, you build a company that was acquired, if I, if I'm correct. Uh, and now SumUp will will keep going on acquisition. Would you help them now? W what mistakes that you made that can that you that you won't make or SumUp won't make again in the future? So yes and yes, yeah. That was the first time, obviously. <laughs> And uh, and yes, I'm I'm being involved with SumUp in in further acquisitions, especially in this payment area, point of sale area, where we're looking to for external growth. And uh, yeah, I'll try to help them improve the processes, especially when it comes to the integration plan. Uh, as I believe, like as I said, the integration plan needs to be extremely quick, right? The quickest, the better, and um, and so I will focus with them on making sure that we have defined the right criteria, you know, to assess a business. Because the funny thing is, like when you are in such company like SumUp, you know, so they've raised about a billion euro. They're looking to they're looking for um, further acquisition in many spaces, and they have a team dedicated so to M and A. And the, the job of this team, it's basically to acquire new businesses. So they, they get excited by any businesses for, for any single reason, you know, because they want to make deals, right? And so as a, let's say, a business representative within SumUp, I need to make sure that we follow the right criteria of assessment, that we have a plan, and, uh, and so on, you know, to make sure that the, the acquisition is going to be strategic and also is going to be efficient. And, and Eric, also, Shadow now is in, back in business. So, are you? Do you have a, a la, uh, time ta a time frame for uh, new acquisitions, and or is it not on the on the radar? Uh, right. Number one is to bring back our core business, which is the gaming. Uh, you know, on a profitable growth, sustainable growth. So it's on on the way. The second one is to finalize the design of our new IT platform, core business platform, in order to be able to integrate uh, the best of breed, in order to have something which will be different, uh, innovative. And on this one, it will depend on, on the profile of the, uh, the vertical that we want to integrate, either it's sustainable companies and so on, which has the, their, 
future and we don't want exclusivity or it's people who have the talent and the solution which is ideal but not the structure so potentially we'll consider merger and acquisition so today it's a bit soon but we are moving fast okay uh, we have time for one last question and i couldn't end this panel without asking you this because we're talking about m a like it's a common thing but it's a huge thing for an, an entrepreneur it's maybe sometime once in a lifetime so i just wanted to ask you how did you react did you remember exactly where you were when the deal was when the deal was signed and and what was your reaction joseph <laughs> um i was tired <laughs> i was tired because the process is uh, tiring and i remember it was uh on a friday night like that's a true story actually it was on a friday night at 6 a.m right And we were supposed to, to, to sign everything, and we got everyone signed and, and, and so on. And uh, unfortunately, one of our investors uh, fell to sleep, and so we couldn't completely close the deal. And so we had to wait for the next day in order to close everything. And then I went for a weekend, and I think I'd slept for maybe like two days or something. So yeah, okay. tired would be the answer. <laughs> Great. How about you, Eric? And, and for us, it was a different situation because uh, Blade was under Chapter 11, so we were in the court to defend our vision, our structure, our, uh, our business plan. And in front, we had a junior guy called um, uh, the guy from Free, <laughs> Xavier Niel. Ah, yes, I remember now. Xavier uh, so <laughs> to be against Xavier, it's not a pleasure cruise. So it was very, uh, and this project was very good also. Uh, so when we have been awarded, uh, we were really tired, but really happy because uh, I think it recognized that our project makes sense and we will do it and execute. Great. Well, thank you for, very much for sharing this. Time's up. Uh, and uh, maybe we can uh, see each other in a year or two so you can, uh, s we can see if that vision and those two visions uh, achieved. So thank you again. I think we can thank them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.